I went through a nasty divorce from my first wife that lasted 19 years, spent $7 Jeez. million dollars in attorneys, you know, but so the money is like, you know, and, and you think, you still think you're there and keep on living the lifestyle. So the whole thing is, you know, still driving the Bentley, still driving the, 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 mm. the, all my cars and still having the watches and the lifestyle and people still think I'm like a big shot, but I'm not. And uh, so, so at that point, you know, so the realization that came when I came back was, I'm so blessed to know that I can get to work every morning and I get to do something that I love. Like, like when I told you the, the blessing of the universe gave you. That. And, and when I said that, like, one, luck is something. So, so when I was telling you earlier, like the three things, work hard, work smart, and find you, 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 your vocation of what it is, the fourth element that really puts the whole thing together and, and, and envelops and put the sunshine and the aura is what you said, luck, which I call blessings. It's like the element. Luck is not luck. It's going to come in. Blessings are going to come and go. But basically, the universe can... And I don't want to sound like I'm religious, which I am to a second, but, but, but I believe in the, the rules of the universe. You know, I, and I believe that the universe can come and take everything from you and can give it to you back. In, and and I'm, I'm a living example of what has happened. And because of my, my, my consist, constant work always has been there doing all that stuff. So... Uh, so the second thing, like I was telling you, is is uh, money is like priority number one, or equally. Uh, number two is is, uh, and I'm talking. I'm getting to the point of of, of posterity. Uh, identifying what you love to do as a living, going to in the morning, waking up and knowing that I'm excited to do, knowing that I'm going to design, whether I'm going to do accounting, whether I'm going to be work, do something that I'm going to make a difference out there. Uh, and then number three thing is. Uh, is legacy, mm -hmm. you know. So, and, and it's a new element that came into my life only two, three years ago. And I realized that suddenly people know who I am, you know. Thanks for Instagram, of course. Yeah, you got five million followers. Yeah, and, and, but but it's like, but again, when I was not working, I had one point four million. Mm -hmm. You know, understand why? Why I, I had not posted one picture uh, of new content in in years? It was all old pictures, like all history stuff. I was verified in 2014. Mm. Didn't ask anybody to be verified, and suddenly, like the whole thing started building in. You know, when when I had to come back, you know, ASAP helped me a lot. Uh, Rocky, uh, I went to Yams Day. Uh, you know, I was with them. You know, just with the, with the, the whole ASAP mob and and Virgil. You know, Virgil kind of referred to me as his mentor, you know, even though I you know, was not that close to him, you know, Don C mentioned that, old, you know, gave me a trophy telling me I was his mentor. And, and obviously they grew up in, 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 in the 90s in, in Chicago where the biggest thing that was there was the Bulls and, she, and, and, and Michael Jordan wearing nothing but my jackets. Right. And the most icon, my most iconic jacket I've made in my life. So I realized that Legacy played a big part. Like when I'm not here, my name, I want my name to stay around. I mean, I want my name. I don't have any plans per se as far who's going to carry over the company and who's going to be there or whatever. I really, I have kind of some plan, but not everything very clear, you know, because I, you know, who knows if I'm not going to sell the company before before I go away and, and retire, you know, or continue running it, but not having the to want it and Cause obviously if, I'm if, going to that direction. If you're an entrepreneur, even me, I'm 38. I mean, it has to at least cross your mind at times, you know? If I get fucking hit by a car tomorrow, what happens? I, I do it, of course I do it, of course, you know. So, uh, no, I have, I have, I have certain uh, uh, things in place, you know, mm. just to, in case uh, something, uh, something happens. Definitely. Um, it's interesting when you say that you like tried other things and then came back to the root because I feel like a lot of us are kind of constantly facing those questions in life like there's I, I could sit here and do interviews every day and I know that they're gonna make some money and there is gonna be an audience for it some but sometimes once you've done a million interviews or you've made a million jackets you start to think maybe I could do something bigger maybe I could do something different it, it was a little bit different you know just uh in 2002 I sold my company to to a public company and I sold for a lot of money and uh and I started making a lot of money. I was making a lot of money just working for them. Mm. I was making $3 million a year as a salary, whatever, between the salary, the bonus, and the... I mean, something like 2002. And, and then I sold it on top of it. And then they, 
decided not to pay me. They started to cut down everything. And I was making too much money. And I was too much of a, you know, too much of a shiny star mm. into a corporate world that they tried to push me out. And they basically pushed me out. And again, lawyers and lawyers. So, so technically from 1984 till 2007, I was with nothing but lawyers. I'm talking tens wow. of, probably 20, 30 million dollars in lawyers my whole lifetime I spent. And, and I was burnt out. Mm. So the divorce took over everything my, with my wife. Even though I won the divorce, I spent seven million dollars in attorneys, uh, broke my relationship with all my, my kids, wow. uh, and, and I was miserable. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Honestly, I didn't want to be around. And it's just, uh, you know, like I said, I'm maybe the spiritual person in me didn't allow me just to cross the line any time after that. And and I was totally burnt out again. And then to the point where in 2019. Uh, just didn't want to do anything anymore. Didn't want to wake up in the morning. I was like, like I say, wake up in the morning and drinking and take two Xanax and smoke weed and not want to go, not want to work, even though that was against my precept of me, my my, my, my discipline. And uh, getting into fender benders every day, sold my cars because I just couldn't afford anymore. Uh, sold the house. Uh, and... Uh, Start getting like a safe under banner still I got into a real bad car accident, which happened to be not my fault, maybe it was not my fault, but for some reason, you know, I just if I had better reflexes at the time, I would have been better. I was not uh, under it was in the morning, right. and I was five days in the hospital. I fractured my chest, broke my arm, mm. and I was like, Who was there to take care of you through all the stuff you was going just through? Just my, my, my wife and my mother, you know, at that time, I separated with my wife. Uh, um, even though we're still together, we're not, you know, my wife had been with her 38 years together, so she's always going to be around with me, and, and I still, she's still number one in my life, and, and my mom, you know, and, and so I started taking care of my mom, and my mom is 89 years old, but so it's kind of like, they were taking care of me. Uh, and at that point, you know, I just like really just didn't know what to do. I couldn't, I couldn't even get up from bed after, after the hospital. I mean, I was in t tremendous pain, could not sleep, broken wrist, all the thin, broken elbow, uh, and pills and pills and all kind of like uh, eye opioids and just like was not even myself. I didn't want to even dress up and look at myself in the mirror. That was December 2019. Uh, December, November, December, uh, Jim Jones and Vado decide to, they call me, they say, we're going to do a song called Jeff Hamilton. Wow. And why? <laughs> like really in my, in my <laughs> mind, like I don't get it. I mean, LL Cool J 10 years before, so then, you know, you've heard, you've been a big part of the culture. I said, well, is he smoking? Is he, the, what, what does he mean? I don't, I've never done anything intentionally to be part of anything. I just did it from my heart with my feelings, my trying to be as creative as I could be. And uh, so they came up with that song and, you know, I didn't have any jackets actually. I wasn't even working. So I had only my personal jacket. I loaned them all my personal jacket. They wore them in the videos and stuff like that. They want me to, to fly to New York to be in the video. And I say, well, if I go to New York, it'll cost me another couple of grand. And I, I don't have two grand to, 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 to waste and to, to, to going there for, so I, I, didn't, I didn't do it. All right, people, we just hit 300,000 subscribers. You know we're trying to hit 400,000 subscribers. So that little red button, tap it, tap in. Appreciate y'all.